Hi, welcome to Blockholic. In this video, we are going to see what a blockchain is. So before we get into the topic, I want to give you a simple introduction about this tutorial. Here I'm going to make a 10 part video series on blockchain basics and this is the first video of it. If you don't want to miss the other videos, please do subscribe. Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to explain what blockchain is, is right from the basic. So if you have a basic understanding on what blockchain is, I would suggest just skip this video. This is not for you. But if you want to have a detailed understanding or if you want to start from zero, then you are at the right place. Let's get started. Okay, what blockchain is? In generally, a blockchain is a growing list of records called blocks that are linked using cryptographically to form a chain. So what I'm trying to say is that a blockchain has a blocks and the blocks are linked each other with a cryptographic and it forms a chain. So it is called a blockchain. So let's see how it works. Let's assume that they have some data which you want to keep it in a blockchain. So I have taken some sample text over here. So let's say this is the from user one and the user one has stored the data in the block. And if you see there is a lock button over there, that means the data is completely encrypted. That means the data is nobody going to watch it. So the data is already in the block and it is completely secure. Now let's assume that there is another user and you want to add another data to the block. So what he's going to do, he's going to keep the data again in the block and he's going to secure the block with the cryptography. Now what these two users, the user one and user two is going to do is that they are going to link their blocks with cryptographically encrypted algorithm and forms a blockchain. If you see the image over here, there are two blocks. That means there is a data in one block and there is a data in the other block. So what they're trying to do is that they're trying to chain the block and then they're going to form a chain and the chain, the data between these two blocks are cryptographically encrypted. So you don't worry about this cryptographically encrypted and blah, blah, blah words. We are going to have a detailed walkthrough in the upcoming videos. Hope you have a good understanding on what I'm trying to explain you over here. So there is one block which has a data and there is another block which has another data. We are going to combine these two blocks and form a chain. That's where a blockchain is. Now, what is the architecture of a blockchain? Before we get into the architecture of a blockchain, let's understand the current scenario of the client server architecture. If you take any organization, let's say you have an organization, maybe Google or Facebook, these companies have their database at one particular place and the same database will be accessed by throughout globe. That's how it works, right? Let's say um, you are trying to access something from your bank account. Okay. And sometimes you get a message saying that the server is down and you cannot access the uh, system anymore. That means the server, whichever is located at the headquarters or at any place and it is not accessible by other people. That is the current client server architecture. That means there is a server in between and the server will connect to the all the other computers and then share the data. But in the blockchain connection happens is like there are multiple computers and there is no server over here if you observe. So every computer will act like a server. Every computer will have their own data. If you see the earlier example here, the complete data to perform the transactions in the network is stored in the centralized database. But here, as there is no centralized database, everybody will have the data. Everybody has the same power. Everybody can do the same transaction of the other person who is in the network. And if you see here, the lines are connected to each other and it is it's like an infinite. Let's say this computer is connected to this one and this one, this one, this one and this one. And if you take this computer, this is connected to this, 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 this. This looks little awkward, right? When I say computers, 
but in blockchain we don't call that as a computer and we call this as a node it is n o d e it's a node nothing but it's a computer which has a data of a blockchain let's see how it works here we have the data if you observe we have a data in data 1 and here we have another data and the complete thing is in a blockchain so what happens is like this data will be moved into the node 1 that means here and node 2 and node 3 and node 4 what will happen if there is a new block what will happen is that this block is going to add into the other blocks like this this block will add over here and then this transaction will happen at all the places that means whatever the data you have it the same data will be distributed to all the computers or all the nodes in the network now see here that means the data is over here and here and here and here and if someone joins newly in the network again they will also have the same kind of a data hope you have a good understanding on what I'm, I'm talking right so here if you see let's say there is a failure at node 5 that means some due to some problem the node 5 is not accessible what will happen do you think the network is going to down no because the other four is running right so there is no single point of failure that means at any point of time as long as the nodes are live up and running there won't be any problem to the network so we don't see the issue of uh, client server architecture where the server is um, down due to maybe a load issue or something here it won't happen like that the real-time examples of a blockchain is a BitTorrent and Bitcoin. Um, you might be definitely familiar with what Bitcoin is, but you might be very much familiar with BitTorrent as well. So in for the past 10 years, there might be a people, thousands and hundreds of people who has downloaded the movies with a torrent. So what they do, there is an application. So you search for a torrent and then movie torrent and then you will start the movie downloading there probably you might have here uh, peers that means the people whoever is having the movie of the one whatever you are talking about so all them all of them is called as a peers and you download the movie or upload the movie through the peers so here there is no kind of a centralized server the data is located in all over the computers all over the a people whoever have the movie and then it is going to be downloaded fast this is the reason if you don't get how torrent works bit torrent works and how the movies are getting downloaded and i have a further more things uh, to explain you a little further on what blockchain is see here a digital ledger that keeps a record of all transactions take place on a peer-to-peer -peer network if you observe in a blockchain we don't have a server we have a nodes so each node we call it as a peer to another node right that's the reason we call it as a peer to peer network and if you see here a digital ledger that keep a record of all transactions if you observe earlier if there is a new block added the block will also add it into the all the nodes that means there is only one ledger and the same ledger is available at all the net nodes in the network and the second one the information transferred via blockchain is encrypted and every occurred record ensuring immutability let's say i'm i'm a malicious user and uh, i assume that i want to do some data because everybody have a data right the four people who are connected to the network all these four people have a data of the own blockchain so if i want to make some changes okay in one computer this won't be reflecting on the other computers other nodes let's say so what will happen whoever have a majority power in the network their transactions will perform and that will be added as a new block let's say there are five four people in the network and one person is trying to do some changes in the record which is already there in the blockchain so what will happen you know yes of course he don't have enough power to lead the network 
so is is this transaction will be rejected so it won't be added into the network so we are going to talk about the consensus mechanism in the upcoming videos just don't worry about it for now and it is decentralized so there is no need for any central or certifying authorities or eliminating single point of failure which we just discussed there is no central authority who is going to control the data it is spread across all the networks and nobody owns the data and last but last least here transfer of currency contracts records and any other kind of a data can be done using blockchain so there is an assumption outside that only a money can be transferred to or in the blockchain network but it's not like that if you have some file you want to send it to your friend or some company or encrypted format or you want to send it uh, let's say uh, securely then you can be able to use blockchain that's how it goes okay thanks for watching my video if you have any questions please feel free to comment below and don't forget to subscribe thanks for watching